If you're someone that struggles to get a breakfast in the morning, these granola bars are a great solution to get that extra half an hour in bed or get ahead of yourself during the week itself. So minimal ingredients, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our kind of wet mixture to add to our oats. Our oats are our main components here. And always, when we're baking, we're looking at kind of three things. What's the sweetness, what's the fat source, what's the bulker, and then what's the spice. So the bulker is the oats, the sweetness is sugar or honey, the fat source is butter, and I'm adding peanut butter to that as well. And we'll spice it with some cinnamon and salt about down the way. So to start off, we have a kind of saucepan on a, on a high heat. We're gonna add in our butter just to melt it down. So we're not, we don't wanna burn the butter, we're just gonna very gradually melt it down. Going with a knife, it can be often help just to cut it into small little cubes. And as that melts, what we'll do is we'll add in our sugar, which will melt with the butter. So you get one nice kind of mixture. And our peanut butter. So again, you don't have to add the peanut butter. I like it, it gives it a nice creaminess, gives it a nutty consistency and nutty flavor to the granola bars. And also we add nuts later on, so it complements that really well. So we'll pop that into, into our saucepan and we'll just melt all three components down together to even nice homogenous mix in the saucepan. Once it's fully melted, I'm gonna take this and pour it into our oats container itself. So we'll just give it a stir through. We want a kind of nice, like a wet sand consistency in our bowl. So keep stirring that through. I won't add it in all yet. We'll stir it first, and then we have a look at it. Okay, so we're gonna need more. So we'll keep going. Pop that in, and completely stir through. So again, like always, we wanna make sure it's fully mixed through. There's no pockets of dried oats. There's no pockets of really wet butter or sugar. So make sure it's really well mixed together and then we'll add our toppings in. In with our hazelnuts, and the same quantity of dried fruit. So again, you can do whatever you like with this. You could do chocolate, you could do um, any fruit, any nuts, anything works perfectly in this. So get that in, and just mix that through. If you're using chocolate, you might want to cool down the mixture a little bit first, because if you add it in chocolate, it'll melt with the mixture. So if you want chocolate chips in it, let it cool down a little bit, and then stir it through. So the very last step, once it's all fully mixed through, we have a nice, again, wet sand consistency, so there's plenty of butter there. If it's too wet, add some more oats. If it's too dry, add a little bit more melted fat. So we've lined greased tin. Uh, any tray will work, so make sure there's a little bit of a side on it. And even if it's too big, I'll show you what, what we can do here. So we'll take our mixture, and we'll just pop that into our tray. So that looks amazing. And, and again, you're getting those beautiful notes of the Richness from the butter, the sweetness from the sugar, and that nuttiness from the peanut butter as well. So we'll take that off. What I will do is I'll just do a small sprinkle of cinnamon over the top. You can mix that through if you want, but it's a little bit over the top, so it has kind of a nice, just burst of, of this kind of festive and this uh, autumnal seasoning works great with it. So what we'll do is we'll just spread it out if it fits the pan perfectly, spread it down, but if you want thicker size bars, what you can do is push it all to one side of the pan. So we'll just take half of this pan, for example. Push it all, press it down, so it's really important that we give plenty of pressure here to squish it all down so when it does cook, and when we are leaving it set, it's fully compact together. Because if you don't, if you don't use enough fat, or if you don't use enough pressure pushing down, it'll just end up being this loose, gravelly granola, basically. And there's nothing wrong with that. If it goes wrong, you've granola made. But we want granola bars here. So push it down, plenty of force. Keep packing into one side. And we're gonna get those nice, thick granola bars. Again, you can cover a whole surface if you want, but we're gonna keep it one side. Once there's plenty of pressure there, we're gonna pop that into the oven. We're gonna do it low and slow, so a nice low temperature. Until it cooks, then we're gonna leave it set fully, take it out, and then cut it. And the finished product are these beautiful golden pieces of granola bars. Perfect to carry to lunch or perfect for the morning if you're stuck for breakfast. Again, depending on the macros that Keegan may have you on, you can add more carbs, add more a protein source to them. But they're a really good source of a slow-release carbohydrate, a good fat source in there as well. So hope you enjoyed the recipe and we'll see you in the next one.